Hey guys, I am so happy to be here with you again today. You know, cause back when I was younger, I wanted my own talk show. So thank God for YouTube. And if you're black, I'm rooting for you too. So today I am a little, you know, dressed up, spiffed up. Y'all have not seen me this way in so long. And so I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to look like this. I'm happy to feel like this. But today's video is more of a sit down video. As we're coming up into the holiday season, you know, sometimes you're in relationships and they don't always work out. And sometimes you happen to, you know, break up before Christmas. You don't get your Christmas gifts, but also you don't have to buy him no Christmas gifts, right? Right, so we're gonna rejoice there. Yay, 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 round of applause. So yeah, I am doing this video for anyone who may be experiencing a breakup around the holiday season. It obviously is not the most ideal time to experience a breakup. I mean, no time is a good time to experience a breakup, but if there's a special person that you care about and you can't spend like one of the most joyous times of year with them, it kind of could play on your emotions. Um, and I'm not even gonna say kinda, it definitely plays on your emotions when you can't spend um, you know, this time making memories with somebody that you anticipate spending a long time with. In today's video, I'm just going to give you a few steps on how to get over a breakup around the holiday season. It actually can go for any season, but you know, Around the holiday season, it's a little colder, it's a little chilly. Some people are not trying to do the whole turn up thing because that's how a lot of people get over breakups. They just turn up, turn up, turn up till they can't no more. And then they still have to go back and do all the other work. So this is how you can do it during the holiday season. And I actually got this thought from a Saweetie YouTube video that my best friend sent me recently. I will link that down below. So we're gonna get into the video. Okay, so the first thing in the spirit of the holiday season um, that I would say that you should do to get over a breakup is journal. And I'm saying that I'm associating that with the holiday season because you know right now is the time where people start thinking about their New Year's resolutions and start thinking about um, what they've done this year, what they've accomplished, what they plan to accomplish next year. And it's just a time of a lot of self-reflection. So I think journaling is an awesome way to go ahead and like be in tune with exactly what you're feeling. You get to reflect and um, you just get to write out your thoughts and you know everything is fresh and you're just like, okay, this is what I did this year and next year i don't want to deal with that so it's just a perfect time to go ahead and journal be true authentic just say exactly what you are feeling how you're feeling even if it's not good journal it so also another reason that i recommend journaling is just like with your vision boards and any other goals that you set you can always go back and look and see exactly how you're feeling in this very moment so Definitely, number one, go ahead and journal your rawest, purest thoughts after this breakup. It's very therapeutic. Writing is very therapeutic. So me personally, I have this journal right here. It says embrace the day. And a lot of times when I'm having a great day or if I'm having a horrible day, I just go ahead and journal. And um, recently I've been having some not so good days. So I, it's all in here, honey. And it's funny that I will go back and read and be like, oh my God, I was going through this and look at where I am now. So definitely journal to go ahead and get over a breakup. Number two, what I would say you wanna do is sit with your feelings. Like, I know, I know you don't really necessarily wanna be sad and depressed, but I think sitting down with your feelings, especially after journaling is amazing because like if you need to cry, you can do that, get it over with, cry because it's not Christmas day yet, nobody's around. Just get all those feelings out. <laughs> like let those feelings run its course. If you need to cry, if you need to blow your nose and do all that stuff, you can do it in the privacy of your own room without all of the family and without all of the good Christmas dinner and New Year's meals getting cold. You can go ahead, sit in your room, 
put the covers over your head, just cry, sit with your feelings. And everybody doesn't necessarily get sad after a breakup. Sometimes you are angry, you are infuriated. You know what? Sit with those feelings as well. Go ahead, write things down, tear them up. Um, whatever you gotta do, just don't hurt nobody or yourself. Like, don't do anything unlawful, but let those feelings be true to those feelings. Let them run their course. Like, you're having those feelings for a reason. It is not unnatural. Just do what you have to do, okay? So you're gonna journal, then you're gonna sit with those feelings that you journaled about and see why those feelings, or see maybe what those thoughts are triggering in your body. And sometimes it's to cry, sometimes it's to punch the air, sometimes it's to write stuff down, tear it up, rip it up, you know. So sit with your feelings because Ignoring your feelings can be more detrimental than, you know, acknowledging your feelings. I mean, that's just like anything else. If you have somebody that ignores you, if you're anything like me, ignoring me is way worse than just acknowledging me the first time around because after you ignore me and then you acknowledge me, I'm not gonna be as nice. So same thing with your feelings. Just let them run their course. Acknowledge them. Acknowledge that they are here. Acknowledge why they are here. If you are not spending time or communicating or doing whatever you want to do with this person that you want to be with, then that's why those feelings are there. They are valid, okay? So the next thing I would suggest is in the spirit of the holiday season, you need to treat yourself, honey. Go get your nails done. Go get your lashes done. Go get your brows done. You know, treat yourself, honey. Go to she in, honey. Get what you need to get so you can be starting to look cute out in these streets. Like, go shopping, honey. Go shopping. Go shopping. Because you ain't got to buy him no Christmas gift no more. Go shopping, baby. Okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm about to tear up the place trying to show y'all all my stuff. But yes, go shopping. Treat yourself. The money that you would have spent on him, do something for you, baby. Go on a vacation. Put it in your savings account. Pay something off. Or just, you know, buy something that is going to make you happy. And maybe it might be a moment of happiness, but in the midst of you sitting with your feelings and going through waves of ups and downs, It'd be nice to have a little bit of happiness. And whenever you use whatever you put your money towards, you know, you're just gonna like feel good. So then you can be on a ebb and flow of good feelings and maybe like more calm feelings. So yeah, go ahead and um, treat yourself. Um, after you treat yourself, honey, give face. Because you thought I was going to be sitting there with a snotty nose. I mean, I was. But you thought I was going to sit there with a snotty nose. For how long? How long did you think? How long? Baby, baby, get cute. Take a selfie in front of your Christmas tree. Because and... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm for real, though. Because I'm really about to take some pictures later on. Because, baby... We're not about to look the part. And I was actually listening to a podcast today, Portia For Real, and I think the episode was episode three, You Got This Queen, and it talked about faking it till you make it. And people really have a problem with that term or whatever it's called. Um, people have a problem with that because they say it's like being fake. Um, but in the podcast, they really spoke to that being an affirmation. Because, you know... People love to say, oh, I write affirmations. I give myself positive affirmations, but you can't fake it till you make it. But um, Portia's sister on the podcast, she made a point. She said, faking it till you make it is more like the manifestation of an affirmation. So it's kind of like I'm living like how I anticipate living in the days to come. So if you're not happy all the time, you do have to sometimes put on a brave face and say, I am happy because that did not define me. That did not find my, define my happiness. My happiness resides in me. So go ahead, fake it till you make it, honey. You have to psych yourself out because what's the point in sitting there like, oh, I'm so sad, oh, I'm so sad, oh, I'm so sad. That is not making you happy, right? It's not, it's making you more sad when you dwell on how sad you are. So when you just think about the remnants of happiness and positivity and um, appreciation and gratitude, like when you start dwelling on those type of things, 
then you will generate those type of things in your life. And yeah, so affirm what you want to be, to be, okay? Hope I didn't lose anybody there. So the number five is having community. So when you're going through things like this, especially during the holiday season, like you will probably encounter a lot more people in your space, more family, more friends. There are gonna be holiday parties. There are just gonna be so many things that you can do during this time. So it is important to have community, like lean on your community. Talk to them about what you're feeling, why you're feeling it. Talk to them because chances are you are not talking to the person that led you to my video. You ain't talking to the person that landed you in the space of a holiday breakup, are you? No. So just have a community that you can talk to about these things. Have a community that will support you. Have a community that will let you treat yourself and affirm yourself and sit with your feelings and they can ride the roller coaster with you. I mean, you don't wanna take them through nothing too, too crazy, but you know, just have people there to support you. And when you may be in one of those moments of despair where you're really like, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. They say, girl, you gonna get through this, honey. You done did it 12 other times. Sorry, <laughs> but I'm just saying, this is probably not your first breakup. And if it is, I am so sorry, but there are a lot of things that you didn't think you were gonna get through and you got through it. So you just need people to remind you, like you got this, you're stronger than that. This is not, that was not your identity. That was just a part of you. So yeah, go ahead, have community and y'all just lean on one another because there will be a time where maybe they need to talk to you about the same type of thing. and. My next thing is just a level up, baby, level up. So you definitely need to have like a track of what went on in the relationship, what was the demise of the relationship, how did we end up here? And that's why it's kind of like important to journal. Like you need to journal maybe what led up to the breakup or the breakdown um, and just level up. Like if there's anything that you could have done acknowledge that and take it into the next situation that you go into like if there's anything that you don't think you could have done better just remember to remain that person that you were and the person that's meant for you they will appreciate all that you are and all that you're not like that is a prayer that i always pray lord when i get a husband let him love me for everything i am and everything i'm not because you know what I can't be, I can't be, I can't have it all. That is just one thing. I can't encompass every good quality. I cannot encompass every good attribute or feature like physically. So I want the person, my person, to love me for everything I am and everything I'm not. So go ahead and take all of this and level up, level up, level up. And you know what? Enjoy your holiday season. Because baby, you know, every holiday will not be like this. One of these holiday seasons, we gonna be, oh my gosh, I'm getting married in two months, or oh my gosh, he proposed to me three months ago. So yeah, like baby, baby. Oof. Who crying under a Christmas tree? Not me. Who crying, who is crying under a Christmas tree? Not me. Okay. All right. So you shouldn't either. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope I've said something that will resonate with you. Hope I've said something that will make you feel better about maybe not spending this Christmas with someone that you anticipated spending it with, but knowing that, you know what? It won't always be like this. All right. So until next time, 